abortion industry really is the future. Our chemical abortion is the future of the abortion industry. We have uh, uh, feared this for some time, that that would be the case, uh, simply for the fact that they could illegally make this accessible by the internet, and that's what they're doing. Does everybody understand the chemical abortion process? It is a two-pill protocol. Uh, the RU-46 is given uh, at the abortion facility. Uh, the woman is sent home with the second pill, commonly known as Cytotec, to take about 48 hours after that, and with very specific instructions, and she is left to abort on her own. And instead of getting into all of the, the issues about that, the video for the second half of this workshop is going to explain it in a much more vivid and effective way. We'll have a friend of mine, Dr. Harrison, who will also talk about the uh, ramifications, the physical ramifications and complications of uh, chemical abortion. Um, there are, uh, for instance, I went to one of the international illegal outlets online. I presented as dire case as I could to try to get turned down for purchasing this, these pills, this death drug with a credit card. I posed as a 15-year-old girl, no proof of pregnancy, uh, no health history, um, gave a different address than my own, to, made it very clear that my parents were not aware of what was going on, um, made every scenario possible. Uh, looking bad for them to provide this drug to me. And I got to the point where all I had to do was put in a credit card number, hit the word send, or hit the send key, and they would have mailed it to me. If I'd had the $85, um, a girl in, with this description could have had easy access. That's in the United States? Yes. Access, the, the supply is out of the country, of course, which is illegal. The FDA uh, is, beginning to um, to work against them. It, it would be easy, I think, for them with technology to track these packages coming in. They can track everything else. So we're hoping that they really uh, clamp down on these illegal outlets. There's an issue of safety with the medication and the effectiveness of the medication, which is in great question. So it's, it's really experimenting and using these women as guinea pigs. We're not sure what the long-term implications will be for future fertility or future health uh, using this very strong drug. But it's very clear it's not Plan B or the morning after pill. That's what I was wondering what's the difference. It is an abortifacient that kills a baby with a beating heart. Not Plan B which sometimes will either prevent ovulation or uh, prevent that human embryo from attaching to the wall of the uterus, which is a very early abortion. Um, we're really concerned about the physical and psychological ramifications of these drugs. Um, and we have put together a website, which is a wonderful uh, place of resources for women to go. It was designed to be uh, for young women who are computer savvy so that they could go and get information and get plenty of it. What's the website? It, well, I'm just about to tell you here. It's called abortion, I'm, I'm sorry, abortion, oh, I want to get this right. Here we go, abortiondrugfacts.com abortiondrugfacts.com. We have resources, uh, information describing the protocol. We have research posted there so women can read that and uh, be informed. And we also invite them to tell their story. Uh, we encourage them to tell their story. They can also contact the FDA and tell their story to them. They can remain anonymous through both outlets, but in order to stop this, we're going to need the women to speak up and talk about their experience and problems they've had with the drug.
as the video will, will indicate. So, um, and what the, the problem with this drug is it's such a serious situation because it is the biggest challenge facing the efforts to end legal abortion in America. Even if we pass all the laws to stop uh, abortion, shut down all the abortion mills and facilities across the country, we are gravely concerned about access of this death drug via international or underground internet access. And we have learned quickly that the health and welfare of women is not on the radar screen. It is primarily to promote a political agenda of advocating abortion on demand throughout pregnancy and uh, the safety aspects uh, are not even brought up if you visit the website. And uh, you'll see from the video that there are serious concerns about uh, profuse bleeding and bleeding out and infection. Is it, is it basically, if it's going to kill a baby, I would imagine it's a toxin, so it's not yes. like a toxin. Yeah. Yes. So we'll can, we'll can, get to questions afterwards because I've got just a limited amount of time to explain this and then watch the video and then we have 10 minutes for question and answer. There was an unethical study recently mm -hmm. and they're doing this around the country, uh, around the world, primarily on poor women. They're actually testing uh, RU486 for late, mid to late term pregnancy. And it's not approved for anything past 10 weeks, but they are experimenting on poor women in poor countries to see if they can um, have a breakthrough with this. I, the, the ramifications are awful. An, another unethical study here in America uh, was done by people who are either, most of the, the people doing the research, so-called research, are abortionists or they work for Planned Parenthood. So you can imagine their study uh, on RU46 and uh, reversing it. See, one of the things that, that pro-life doctors have come up with is a protocol for reversing the abortion pill. The woman takes the first pill, but not the second, and she gets to a doctor. She can receive immediate treatment of progesterone, which will uh, counter the effect of the RU46, because the, the RU46 blocks the progesterone uh, levels, receptors. So. This is being successful. The, the research they've done so far is 68% of the pregnancies have been saved. These babies have been saved. And this is of great concern to the promoters of chemical abortion because it's the choice the women make. What they're trying to do is discredit the reversal process, which now is overseen by Heartbeat International and greatly expanding. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And what they did is this unethical study to try to discredit it. Their goal was to recruit 40 women who were pregnant to uh, take chemical abortion pill, RU46, and then um, half would be administered the progesterone, half would get a placebo. And then they would see if this is really effective in saving pregnancies, saving the babies. Now. Um, if they, their baby was saved, and at the end of the research, they were still pregnant, not to worry because they promised them that they would give them a surgical abortion and that no baby would survive uh, the experimentation. So yeah, just imagine the, the low ethics of people who would do this. Now, it seems that God may have intervened here because their goal was to recruit 40 women, uh, they stopped after they recruited 12 because three women experienced severe hemorrhage, which is a common occurrence with this. But one of them so severely that she needed a transfusion. All three had to be rushed to the hospital. Now, um, the, the interesting thing here is two of the three were given the placebo. So you can't blame the... Uh, progesterone and the abortion pill reversal for this. It just underscored 
how dangerous this drug is mm -hmm. by their own study, which they brought to a, a complete and abrupt end. And of course, people, the purveyors of death and abortion, are going to spin the results of this in a way that they feel benefit them. In other words, why? So what they said was, um, if you didn't use, if you're not using misoprostol, which is commonly called Cytotec, the second drug, if you're not taking the second drug, um, it could result in severe hemorrhage, even with progesterone. So they're making it sound dangerous that if you don't take the second drug, that's where you get into trouble. Mm -hmm. And right. that you need to uh, take both drugs. They're also telling women that they will have a uh, profoundly uh, deformed or disabled baby mm -hmm. if they don't take the second drug. Uh, mm -hmm. Research shows that uh, that is not true. So yes, lying to women, uh, taking care of women, concern for women, care of women, really is not on the radar, as I mentioned earlier. So, uh, but, but those who deal with, with the abortion industry and advocates who support it are consistently seeing lies, distortions, and untruths to advocate uh, for abortion. And I think I, did I mention that 68% are, are successful, so uh, keep uh, two of these websites in mind, abortiondrugfacts.com and abortionpillreversal.com. Women have access to immediate medical help 24 hours a day, seven days a week and uh, with a really good success ratio. So it's abortionpillreversal.com and uh, abortiondrugfacts.com. Together, these resources are going to be really helpful to women and those who want, want to aid them. Now, what I want to do with the remainder of our time is show you a video that we produced last year uh, in an effort to educate women about RU-46 chemical abortion pill. So my goal was to show women develop something that could be in crisis pregnancy centers, uh, pro-life women health centers, and we did a 15-minute version for Heartbeat International, and it is in all of their centers now when they're dealing with a woman who wants to have an RU-46 abortion, a uh, chemical abortion. So uh, our goal is to educate women, warn them of the medical scientific uh, data that shows it's a dangerous drug, and then we thought no, nothing could be more convincing except to hear from women who have experienced RU-46 themselves. Um, did anybody see, anybody see Unplanned? Yes. Several, okay. Is that the one about the woman who converted? Abby Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, chemical abortion that they depicted in her in that movie was very <coughs> accurate, as you'll be able to see. So we'll get into this, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers. Click on this. Do I need to turn the lights out? <coughs> Hi, I'm Brad Mattis, president of Life Issues Institute. Thanks for joining us as we take a closer look at the chemical abortion pill. The abortion industry and their advocates say that chemical abortion is a more natural and preferred method of abortion. Is that true? Today we'll be talking with women who have actually experienced the process and hear what they have to say. We'll also be hearing from a medical doctor who will share her professional opinion. Please stay with us. Donna Harrison is the Executive Director of the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists. 
She is well versed in the process of chemical abortion, a two drug protocol with the first pill taken at the abortion facility and the second taken by the woman all on her own, as well as the possible serious risks and complications. The first drug is mifepristone, which is called mifeprex. And that first drug is taken and it blocks the effects of progesterone in a woman's body. It blocks the ability of her womb to feed and nourish the baby. A second drug is given later, and that drug is mesoprostol. It's also called cytotype. And that drug causes the woman's womb to contract and squeeze the baby out. Dr. Harrison, studies have shown that chemical abortion can be more risky for women than surgical abortion. What do you know about the science and the risks involved? One of the best studies was done out of Finland. In that study, they looked at 42,000 abortion patients. About half of them were chemical abortion, about half of them were surgical abortion. And what they found is that the chemical abortion patients had four times the complication rate that the surgical abortion patients had. Hemorrhage, retained tissue, so this was just the immediate complications, not even taking into account the long-term complications. What other complications have you been aware of regarding this one? Well, one of the most serious complications is a deadly infection called an infection with Clostridium sordilii. That's the infection that led to the death of the beautiful California girl, 18-year-old Holly Patterson. Clostridium sordilii is actually in the soil. So we are exposed to that, but when your immune system is suppressed, as it is with both mifeprax and with mesoprostol, then women can't fight off that infection, and it can lead to a rapidly fatal infection. In 1995, Tammy Morris was engaged and looking forward to the next chapter of her life when she discovered she was pregnant. She was already the mother of a young daughter whom she'd given birth to as a teenager and had experienced a surgical abortion years earlier. A lifetime of brokenness, poverty, abuse, and addiction led Tammy to believe she would ruin her upcoming marriage if they started out pregnant. Tammy was convinced a chemical abortion was the only solution. When I met with the nurse and the doctor, they told me that the abortion pill was going to be a simple, mostly painless, private, safe process. It wasn't very long after I took that pill that I began to experience labor. And it didn't take long at all for those labor pains to intensify because I had already given birth to a child, my daughter. I knew what labor felt like and I was shocked. I thought that I would cramp like I had with my surgical abortion, but that it would be over relatively quickly. This was not that. This was horrific. This was me alone, afraid, and feeling like I'm gonna give birth to death. They didn't prepare me for this. They told me that some tissue would be expelled from me, much like clots. And I was on the toilet and I wasn't there very long and the urge to push was there and I felt a mass and then I heard a sound. Horrified, I looked down and there was my baby in a toilet. How did you feel? Devastating. This wasn't uterine tissue. This was a formed, recognizable, undeniable baby. My baby. My fiance's baby. I began to bleed profusely, more than the allowed or normal amount, and I did seek medical attention. What were the weeks like after that? I was angry. I was ashamed. I was, I was very hard to be around because I had this secret. I had this traumatic experience that I couldn't share with anybody. And after all, how does a mother who killed her own child in the womb intentionally, how does she grieve outwardly? 
Shortly after graduating from college, Oregon native Elizabeth Gillette and her boyfriend found out they were pregnant. While afraid she couldn't juggle working and being a mom so soon after graduating, she wasn't convinced abortion was the answer. The boyfriend offered no support and pushed her to make an appointment at Planned Parenthood. Even though she was conflicted, the staff coerced her into proceeding with a chemical abortion. I asked to see the ultrasound, and the doctor said that's really not our policy. And I said I need to see the ultrasound. I need to see it. I had told her at the beginning I'm, not, I'm very unsure. I'm very unsure. And I know how those machines work. <laughs> she took a still shot of the monitor and then rolled the monitor around so that I could see it, and it was just a photo. It was not moving, even though the wand was moving. And she said, do you see? There's no movement. There's no heartbeat. The pregnancy's not viable. And she lied to me because she knew that I was on the fence, that she knew I wanted to leave. And she had one of those little tiny Dixie styrofoam cup things with the pill in it, and she said, all you have to do is take this, I couldn't do it. I couldn't take it out of her hand. And she said, you know, I just can't wait any longer, so you, you need to take this or you need to leave. No one counseled me. No one told me what the options were. Nobody pointed me to any kind of pregnancy resource centers or anything. At this point, I'd probably been crying, waiting, <laughs> trying to drag this out for probably 45 minutes, just with that internal turmoil, that battle. And I lost to myself. I, I did take the pill. She said, you'll experience some light cramping. It'll be like a heavy period since you're early enough. You shouldn't hurt. You need to take these antibiotics in case the very slight chance of infection. Um, I had to take a second pill once I got home. I had no idea what was coming. No idea. Take us through the chemical abortion process. What did you experience? At first, nothing. And then the cramping started. And it was deep and very, very painful. I've had three children since then, and it felt like labor. I miscarried my entire child. Pole. It was the size of a tennis ball, probably. Round. Just a perfect little sack. And inside was this a tiny little gummy bear. Mm -hmm. And I held him. It's a hard memory to live with. Isn't it? Did they tell you about the emotional, the psychological ramifications? No. The doctor had promised me that I would feel relieved. I didn't feel any relief. What did you feel? Overwhelming guilt. Just a sickness inside that I couldn't, couldn't put away. Nightmares started shortly after. I um, stopped eating. I became anorexic. I was later diagnosed with acute post-traumatic stress disorder. Similar to surgical abortion, there are associated risks of psychological ramifications, but on a potentially more serious level with chemical abortion. Dr. Donna Harrison has found many women are unaware and ill-prepared for the emotional consequences of chemical abortion. With an abortion, you get no social support. So these women grieve the loss of their child, and they have no social support for them. And that ends up as a complicated grief, and that's why you have these you know, increased risk of suicide, substance abuse, and hospitalizable major depression. Dr. Harrison, the women we spoke to while at the abortion facility were told by the staff that chemical abortion is natural, easy, and almost painless. What do you have to say about that? Well, that's a lie. It's none of those. It's not natural for a woman's body to have progesterone blocked in the pregnancy. It's completely unnatural. Bleeding from a surgical abortion lasts a day. The bleeding from a chemical abortion can last weeks to months. It's a lot more painful because the woman is 
physically passing the baby placenta, like labor, and in a surgical abortion, she's hopefully under anesthesia. The, the mantra out there is, oh, pop a pill and poof, it's over. Well, it's not over. It's a, a, a aborting with mifeprex and mesoprostol is a tough process, and these women are on their own to do it. It's almost patient abandonment. Over the last few years, the prevalence and number of chemical abortions has continued to rise. Pro-abortion advocates are ignoring the dangers of chemical abortion and pushing for the abortion pill to become more widely available, <coughs> including through online sales and telemedicine. <coughs> The increased availability likely comes with a rise in the number of women who will suffer from serious physical and emotional complications. I think it's really ironic that abortion advocates say they're, they're, they're for women and they use the coat hanger and yet now they're pushing a chemical coat hanger on women. But when you have this drug being given without any medical supervision, I feel for the women who are going to be bleeding at night with no one around, no pain meds, no way to get to the ER. Tammy and Elizabeth are firm believers chemical abortion is not the answer, and that women are strong enough to choose life for their babies. You are strong enough. You can do it. There is not a single woman on this planet that is not strong enough to be a mom or a mom again. Our society is just breeding fear. We tell our women to go out there and get a job and be everything that you can be except be a mom. And that's a lie. I have yet to meet a woman that doesn't regret her abortion. And it's a regret that you you can't reconcile. It's forever. What would you say, Tammy, to a woman who may be watching this and contemplating having a chemical abortion? To seek out people that will help her choose life and walk through that. Choosing life, I'm not saying choosing life is easy. There are resources, there are people who care, there are people who, walk, who will walk with her. She's not alone. They're going to show you how to walk through pregnancy and birthing and raising your precious, precious gift from God. A closer look at the chemical abortion pill shows the process isn't as natural or safe as advocates say. Use this newfound knowledge to share with women who may be contemplating an abortion. Full disclosure empowers them to make choices that both they and their babies can live with. Thanks for watching. Whether you're facing a decision to have a chemical abortion, just need more information, or are troubled by a past abortion, we can help. Visit lifeissues.org today for a list of free resources. Good job. <laughs>
what is normal bleeding, which is profuse, has crossed the line and where they may be in danger of bleeding out. So it's an extremely dangerous drug and it is absolutely irresponsible to uh, market this and impose that on women under false pretenses. So we'll have the rest of the time for questions. So. Well, I mean, do they do they do it this way because they want to absolve themselves of liability? I mean, they're still responsible. If something happens to that woman, that clinic is still legally responsible, right? There's a few reasons they're pushing have been pushing RU46 so uh, strongly. Chemical abortion uh, replaces an abortionist. Um, they were finding it harder and harder to find. Uh, trained medical doctors who are willing to kill babies for a living. You don't invest years in uh, large sums of money to uh, kill human life. You are trained to protect and nurture and save human life. So there's that, the lack of abortionists. There's also uh, the uh, aspect of when Roe versus Wade is overturned, Abortion is made illegal in babies and their mothers are once again protected. This is a much easier clandestine underground abortion to do. And access to it, they're depending upon um, international ports of call, if you will, to, to mail it in. Yes? Are there any efforts to uh, document the, the ill effects that, have, that, are, that are happening to women? In, in an effort to get the FDA to revoke approval of this drug? Well, one of the ways in which we're doing that is through our website at abortiondrugfacts.com, encouraging women to share their experience. Women in uh, um, the United Kingdom of England and that area uh, have been writing in on a website, and the stories that they have been telling have been absolutely heartbreaking, very similar to this and, and worse. Where are, the, where are the chemicals for this compound made, and where are the countries uh, where these, uh, these drugs are shipped into the United States? What we believe that the uh, drugs are manufactured in India. And what they did is the pharmaceutical company in Germany, which its history was that it made drugs uh, to kill Jews. In, in the time of the Holocaust, so there's that, that sure. tie in there. Um, they understood the political ramifications. Uh, we began to boycott Herxt Roussel uh, drugs because they were making this available. So they gave all the uh, patent and information to an organization developed just to market and produce uh, chemical abortion pills. And um, so they are currently, we believe, coming from India and uh, whether they are a good quality or not remains to be seen. What the impact long term on women's health remains to be seen. So this is actually legal then? Yes. Could you explain the difference between uh, RE46 and other um, pills, uh, you know, morning after pill, Ella, or these other things, you go by different names, are they all the same thing? <laughs> the same things? Well, so Ella is an abortifacient uh, pill. Uh, plan B, the morning after pill, is not, um, well, it, it can be an abortifacient. The plan B is about a four times strength of the birth control pill. Um, it is taken within 72 hours after unprotected sex. It has a mechanism like the birth control pill to suppress ovulation um, or uh, keep the, the baby from attaching to the uterus, which is an early abortion. So there is that abortion abortifacient aspect. Chemical abortion RU46 marketed under Mifeprix, there's going to be a test to remember all these names, <laughs> um, is solely for the purpose of killing unborn children. It is a death drug. And Ella? Ella is also an abortifacient for the purpose of aborting babies. Cool. And the competitor, if you will, to RU46. Yeah, it's... Um, Prescription? Yeah, it's not as as popular and readily available. How do you spell Ella? E-L-L-A? E-L-L-A, I believe. I'd want to know for that study exactly at what point did they give them the, um, the backup pill, the, the APR pill, because, yeah. you know, it's all about a timeline. And, and the other thing I wonder about, 
you, in other words, if, if a girl has changed her mind, you got to tell her you got to get on this fast because you are on the clock right now. The longer you wait to take this, uh, what's it called, the, the APR pill? Uh, progesterone. So, progesterone, uh, the less chance you have. And so they, I've heard that in theory you could be up to 72 hours, but I don't think you're normally going to get that far. Well, um, the longer you wait, the, the more it's stacked. The chance, but but the, the thing is, you take pill number two, they tell you 24 hours later, which also makes me wonder that some of these babies ain't dead yet when it happens. You mean when they're... When they take the second pill and then she goes through the contractions uh, and, and her baby is discharged. Yes. Because of the fact that I'm not sure pill number one is really completely finished because uh, they tell you if you take uh, the backup pill, the APR pill, uh, within 24 hours you have a pretty good chance. But that's the same time that they're um, telling you you can take pill number two and have the abortion. So the bottom line is mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they're all dead by the time. Mm -hmm. Well, the process, uh, 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 RE46 Mifeprix by itself has a, a very poor uh, success rate. So that's why you need the Cytotec to cause the severe contractions to expel the baby. Who could mm -hmm. possibly be alive? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I have talked to a girl that said, um, I held my baby in my hand. This time, so I, yeah. um, just yeah. another mission. There's a very good, I was talking about that before, card by uh, Human Life Alliance. It's a fact card. It's beautiful. It's got couple of nice drawings. It explains exactly how this works. It gives you the hotline number. Human Life, it's just a real good resource. Humanlifealliance.com, a uh, real good card. And then you give it to the girl um, any chance you, you can get. Typically, a lot of this depends on the sidewalk ministries that are happening. Because that's the only place they find out about it. They're told that the, the abortion center is not going to tell them about it. You know that you can undo this. <laughs> well, they clearly lie about everything. Yeah, they, so they don't. Fun. So it, it requires people to get out there and say, um, "You can undo this. Here's the card that tells you how." And it is not true that mm -hmm. it can't be reversed. And that's what they're doing. Okay. Uh, somebody needs to tell me when our time is up. Uh, I can't find it. Yeah. But I have a brief question. So just to clarify, are you? Uh, 486 is legal in the United States, this is obviously being given, but it's not produced, nor would it be produced in the United States? It is not being produced in the United States. It is, we believe, being produced in India. Um, so why is that? Because any place here in America would face a boycott, a lot of protesting, so they exported it to another country. Um, and developed a nonprofit organization to uh, produce and distribute the drug to like Planned Parenthood and other abortion facilities. Some um, OBGYNs who have agreed to do abortions. Uh, in the past, we've been able to keep abortion for, for the most part, limited to freestanding abortion mills. Uh, but now, with the access of the abortion pill, it can be uh, dispensed rather quietly. It sounds like even a nurse, it doesn't have to be a doctor that gives the pill, right? Well, it requires a doctor right now. Uh, I guess I have two questions. If you're ordering online, I'm assuming it's not very much guidance, but I'm just thinking how far along could a woman be and well, take it? Well, uh, the FDA has not approved it for any longer than 10 weeks. But they are experimenting on uh, poor women in other countries to see if they can expand that into the second trimester. And then the second thing, the two women in the video, was that shot in the states? So they did they get it from? Yes. Planned so Planned Parenthood gave them an illegal drug. That no, was it was legal. legal. They they took a legal chemical abortion pill. Oh, okay, but not this. One. Right, and the one was in um, Oregon. And the other one was Tammy was in Pennsylvania, I believe. So chemical abortion is legal. Yes. Just that drug right now is not. Yeah, well, it's not being produced in the United States. It's not being produced, but it's not legal. No, it's legal. It's not legal to. They don't want to produce it in the United States because of problems. 
to administer? It's legal to administer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But not legal to it would be legal to make. To make. But no, it would be legal. Nobody to wants to do it. Nobody wants the hassle of producing it here. I think I got it. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're afraid of producing it here for fear of the public outcry and ramifications. Yeah, there will be. But so that's why it's produced in another country. But it is legal to and produce here, important. and it's legal to distribute it. Okay. All right, thank you. And it's confusing. I understand that because then you also have these other knockoffs that are produced and shipped in illegally from other countries, sure. whose quality and effectiveness uh, leaves a lot to be uh, considered. Okay. Brent, if I understand the schedule, I think we have. We have a while. It says 1.30 to 3.50. Uh, that's for the second yeah, workshop. Oh, okay. okay. I was told we had 30 minutes plus yeah, 10 minutes for well. question okay. and answers. Could we... So I think our time's probably up. Okay, I was just going to say one of the things that um, when a woman finds the, the baby that, or part of the baby, uh, in the toilet or in the bed um, and then doesn't know what to do um, flush it away throw it away or gather it up and come to someone to say what do I do and is the church ready this is a challenge for us uh, and for um, when I say church I don't mean just the clergy but for all of us uh, that someone comes and opens the Kleenex up and here is part of well, the baby. Here is this, now what? How do we pastorally care and how do we reach out to um, and be ready for that kind of experience? Um, I wonder if you have any comments. Well, it's very difficult to reach mm -hmm. out to a minister to a woman who's had that experience mm -hmm. because many of them choose chemical abortion to keep mm -hmm. their abortion more private and right. clandestine. And they're, yeah, they're so, guilty, mm -hmm. so there is a great deal of shame mm -hmm. um, associated mm -hmm. with this. And as Tammy said, how do you outwardly grieve mm -hmm. for a baby that you intentionally kill? So most of them are suffering in silence. And that's why we think telling their story will be therapeutic for them and an opportunity to reach out to find help. But I agree, it's going to be uh, it's a challenge we need to extend to all the churches and to all of us pro-lifers to uh, really minister to them. I think the, the women help centers that we have across the country are mindful to do this and equipped to do it also. No, I'm not being a lawyer. Um, I, 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 I continue to think, think and wonder: Is there not some way to bring class action against this uh, sort of thing? Uh, I think of black lung disease and some of these other things where they finally gathered up, gathered up the minors and or other people who have six, similar victimization and, and ran a successful class action campaign against them. And I'm wondering, is, isn't there any way that something like this could be generated? I think that's certainly a possibility with time. Um, you need the pieces to fall together, the women to come forward, uh, and the documentation to be there, mm -hmm. which may be hard because the whole thing was to do it in secret to start with, so there may not be a, a lot of documentation. There should be on the part of Planned Parenthood or wherever they had that done that this was dispensed. But then they send them off and they're on their own and there's no record of, of what uh, happens from there on out. That, that just grieves my heart so, so, so very much when I think of those women who are uh, left on their own to suffer and endure a horrific ordeal and then to, to emotionally pick up the pieces later. You can see that Tammy and, and Elizabeth had a tough time uh, recounting their stories because the pain is so much there, and they've gone through the healing process. Tammy, by the way, has had eight abortions. Which person is that? The, the blonde. The blonde? Yeah. yeah. And it was whew, her chemical abortion that turned things around, seeing that child, seeing the humanity, 
and then finding Jesus and walking through that healing process. Uh, we don't believe there's any way you can fully heal without the blood of the cross and leaning on that. Um, and that's a very important thing that we need to tell every audience we speak to because there are men and women, statistically speaking, more than likely there are men and women in every gathering that we're at that have directly experienced abortion. And we need to let them know that we love you and we want to help you. And we want to walk you through that grief. There's hope and there's healing and we have the resources to do that. Yes. Um, in the movie Unplanned, there's a dramatic representation of a chemical abortion. Is, in your experience in talking with the women, is that uh, it's spot typical, on. atypical? Exactly. How would you describe yeah, that? Yeah, I, I would. Um, when we were doing our TV program, our weekly TV program, um, I interviewed Abby weeks after she came out of the abortion industry. Mm -hmm. um, we, I was in Cincinnati at the time. We flew her in and literally had a fireside chat. And uh, she was forthcoming with so much information that we had to have two programs to get it all in. And um, yes, yeah, she described her, her chemical abortion experience. She had a surgical abortion and a chemical one. And she said the chemical was much worse. And the way she described it in other women uh, was accurately really reflected in the, the movie. And after seeing or hearing from these two women, you kind of get a picture that, yes, that's the reality. Did you say that 40% of the abortions in the U.S. are done by this bill? Yes, and we think that's probably a conservative well, estimate. I was going to say, yeah. we're, we're generally, I'm generally, uh, careful about not wanting to overstate things, but I, I think it's probably more than that. It's just really hard, hard to nail down. One thing we're advocating is a federal law to uh, standardize reporting information from all uh, the states regarding abortion, and then we would have a more accurate picture. But the statistics we have, New Hampshire, Maryland, and New York, or is it Massachusetts? There's three states that do not report their abortions. New York being, I mean, California being one of them, which is of course a big chunk of the abortions done every year. We are looking at around 800,000 a year abortions, which is down from 1.6 million in about 92. Um, that's roughly about 100 abortions every hour, 24-7. Seven days a week. Our chemical abortions. Just abortions in, in general. Them. Yes. And Planned Parenthood does 39 an hour alone. Their effort is to try to uh, corner the abortion market. There's is there another the question? The largest abortion clinic in San Antonio, which beats up Planned Parenthood by multiples, mm -hmm. as their Google reviews, and and they can't control what goes on there. One girl put in excruciating detail, it's about a two-page Google review, the entire blow-by-blow -blow experience. And she was just like Abby Jen. I wasn't told about this. This was horrific. Um, and, and of course, they, uh, they go through this horrendous experience in PTSD, post-abortion trauma, and, and there's nothing provided for them in terms of aftercare because they can't admit that there's a possibility of post-abortion trauma. Just, so they come to us, and we're the ones, the pro-lifers, that help them pick up the pieces of their lives. And I counsel uh, men after abortion, fathers who mm -hmm. grieve, and there are a lot of us that, that minister to these people, finding them, sh telling them that there's hope and healing. Uh, but the blood of Christ covers all sin, and it includes what we consider the big sins of abortion. And it's important that they hear that in church. It's really, really, really important that if we could get every pastor in every church to stand there and say, here is where the repentant heart finds forgiveness, we'll help you walk through that grieving process and you will find hope and healing. You're not alone and here's where you'll find love and forgiveness. I think they'd be in danger. There are so many so many men and women in the in P 
pews and chairs that feel that God hates them. And they desperately want a relationship back with God, but they, they think that abortion is the unpardonable sin. Now imagine being in a church where the sin of, of um, drug addiction, maybe smoking, um, divorce, these things are all mentioned, but abortion is never mentioned. Do you know what those people are thinking? They're, they're coming to us and they're, they're thinking that abortion is so bad, there's not even forgiveness because the, the church isn't talking about that possibility. Mm -hmm. So they're coming to the conclusion, Satan's whispering in their ears, um, yes, you, you committed a sin so bad it cannot be forgiven. And if it's not addressed in the church, they're going to come to all sorts of uh, bad conclusions. And what I tell men when I counsel them is when Satan reminds you of your past, remind Satan of his future. Mm -hmm. And it, is, <laughs> it is not a pretty sight. I like that. And that really ticks him off when we do that. <laughs>